Flying is a fun and exhilarating experience. Earning your pilot's license can be one of the most rewarding accomplishments of your life, but it cannot be done without hard work. A consistent challenge for student pilots is the approach and landing. This key phase of flight presents many variables and requires ample practice to perfect. Here, I will present the basics of landing a light aircraft in a format everyone can understand, regardless of their aviation experience. A key note here, we will focus here on the physical approach to landing of a small aircraft in good weather. However, there are many more complicating factors that go into landing a plane, including traffic pattern procedures, aircraft right-of-way rules, air traffic control, crosswinds and visibility, and emergencies. To learn more about these elements, refer to the FAA's Aeronautical Information Manual. Let us begin by discussing some basic aerodynamics. There are four main forces that govern an aircraft's movement. Lift, thrust, drag, and gravity. It is the balance of these four forces that determines in which direction an aircraft accelerates. When the aircraft is moving at a constant speed and altitude, these forces add up to zero. To control the balance of these forces, we have four primary controls. The elevator, located on the tail section of the aircraft, primarily controls the airplane's pitch, its nose moving up or down. Raising the elevator causes the nose to pitch up. Likewise, lowering the elevator causes the nose to pitch down. The aileron controls, located at the tip of each wing, primarily controls the roll of the aircraft, causing the wings to bank at an angle. One aileron moves up, while the other aileron moves down, causing the aircraft to bank in that direction. The elevator and ailerons are controlled through the yoke in the cockpit. Pushing or pulling on the yoke causes the aircraft to nose up and down, whereas turning the device will cause the aircraft to roll left and right. Controlled with two pedals on the floor is the rudder. The rudder dictates the yaw of the aircraft, or its lateral turning left and right. However, the rudder alone is not as effective as other control surfaces and cannot significantly turn the aircraft by itself. To help us with landings, most planes have flaps. These devices are on the inside of each wing and can be lowered at increments of 10 degrees. Lowering the flaps allows you to fly slower while still maintaining lift. They also help to send the aircraft quickly. There are many different ideas regarding how and when flaps should be used. In this video, we will always use 20 degrees of flaps when landing. The final control is the throttle, which controls the RPM of the engine's propeller. Pushing the black throttle knob in will increase power, and pulling it out will decrease power. Using these controls is intuitive and easy to learn, but it will require practice to use them effectively. In the cockpit, we have six primary instruments to aid you as a pilot. We will use four of them primarily for landing. The attitude indicator, or virtual horizon, illustrates the current pitch and bank of the aircraft relative to the infinite horizon. To the left is the airspeed indicator, which indicates with the needle the current speed of the air that is passing over the wings. Here, it is showing 100 knots. To the right is the altimeter, which indicates your height above mean sea level. It is red like a clock, with the small hand indicating thousands of feet, and the large hand indicating hundreds of feet. Here it is, showing 3,500 feet. Below the altimeter is the vertical speed indicator, this displays the rate at which your altitude is changing. The gauge is in hundreds of feet per minute. 
Here it is displaying 500 feet per minute downward. A key aspect of an approach to landing is the airspeed pitch relationship. Notice that while keeping the throttle constant, pitching the aircraft up causes the airspeed to decrease. This is because when the aircraft is pitched upward, the drag force is increased, causing the speed to decrease. Similarly, pitching down will increase airspeed, as the force of lift is decreased and the aircraft will accelerate downward due to gravity. When approaching the runway, it is important the pilot regulates the airspeed and descent rate of the aircraft. Do not forget that these two variables are both changed by pitching the aircraft up and down. If the aircraft's airspeed gets too low, usually the result of pitching up too much, not enough air will pass over the wings to generate lift, resulting in a stall. This aircraft will stall around 58 knots. Do not go below this airspeed until you are about to touch down. Light aircraft operating near airports utilize a traffic pattern. This is a rectangular path that aircraft fly around a runway. There are five sections of a standard traffic pattern, but we will only be dealing with the base leg and the final leg in this video. The base leg is flown at 90 degrees from the runway center line and intersects the final leg. Here, the pilot makes a gentle turn to line up with the runway entering the final lake. This is the most critical phase of the landing process and the one we will focus on today. The final leg is made up of two parts, the approach and the touchdown. The key to a safe landing is a stable approach. On a good approach, the aircraft is descending at a constant rate and maintains a constant airspeed. To establish a stable approach, we will adjust pitch and power. First, pick an aiming point on the runway. Most runways have large white blocks to indicate the touchdown zone. These are normally great aiming points. The slope at which you approach the runway is known as the glide slope. Using a fixed point on the windshield, notice the movement of your touchdown point. If it moves up, then you are too low. Add power. If it moves down, then you are too high. Decrease power. Remember, we only use power to change the aircraft's glide slope. The shape of the runway will also change if you are too high or too low. Notice the difference between too low, too high, and the correct glide slope. We will maintain an airspeed around 60 to 70 knots on approach to help with this. Let's put all of these components together in a real landing. Here we are lined up to land in Bellingham, Washington. Adjust power to keep yourself on a proper glide slope. Keep the aircraft pointed straight down the runway with the rudder pedals and the ailerons. We are looking to maintain 60 to 70 knots on final approach. Over the end of the runway, reduce power to idle and slowly raise the nose. Hold your nose up until you gently touch down on your back wheels, then gently let down the nose wheel. Apply the brakes as needed and exit the runway. Let's take a look at another example with the base leg. Here we are on the base leg to land in Everett, Washington. Gently turn to final while simultaneously using power and pitch to maintain a proper glide slope. 
It will require rudder and aileron to align yourself properly with the runway. Aim for a touchdown point. As you cross the runway numbers, slowly pitch the nose up and hold it until you gently touch down on your rear wheels. Gently let the nose wheel down. Apply the brakes and exit the runway. Here we have learned the basics of landing a small aircraft. Always remember Use pitch to control your airspeed. Use power to control your glide slope. Fly a stable approach by picking a touchdown point and aiming for it. Reduce power to idle when crossing over the runway. Gently flare and touch down on the back wheels first, then lowering the front wheel. Flying is a fun and rewarding experience. To learn more about getting your license or simply getting in the air, Visit FAA.gov and click on Airman Certification.